parachuting into the darkness behind enemy lines, with the likelihood of finding themselves alone and in need of locating their comrades. This was the outcome those in charge of the 101st Airborne Division believed was possible when it was decided its troops were to parachute into Normandy on D-Day. So a way to accurately identify their fellow paratroopers in the dark was needed. In this video, we talk about the D-Day invention known fondly as the cricket. Once the German occupation of France took place in 1940, the Allies immediately set to work on plans to invade Western Europe. But it wouldn't be until June 6th, 1944, that they would return to France in what is still the biggest amphibious invasion in history. Part of the invasion strategy was to utilise airborne troops. These were to be dropped ahead of the seaborne invasion and secure key locations prior to the rest of the troops hitting the beaches. Because the paratroopers were to be dropped at night, and this being the first time an airborne invasion of this scope had been undertaken by the Allies, leaders of the 101st Airborne Division wanted a way for their troops to distinguish friend from foe. A popular children's toy at the time consisted of a spring steel blade which made a clicking noise once pressed, so nicknamed a cricket because of the sound. This concept was simple enough and prior to the invasion, a manufacturer was sought. Birmingham-based company J. Hudson & Co, also known as the Acme, had been utilised by the British government throughout the war to produce whistles. The design was drawn up and an order for 7,000 of these crickets was sent to the company prior to the invasion. These small devices were made of various metals, primarily from brass, but also some made of tin. The order was completed and collected by a courier who provided them to the airborne troops. The paratroopers of the 101st Airborne parachuted into northern France in the early hours of June 6, 1944. Due to several variables such as pilots flying too fast, troops being dropped too low and heavy anti-aircraft fire, Almost all of the companies of the 101st were scattered throughout Normandy. This meant that most of the troops found themselves alone, behind enemy lines, outnumbered and outgunned. Most of the troops had either strapped their crickets to their rifles, helmets, or hung them on dog tags around their necks. Once a trooper identified a potential threat, they would depress the clicker and release it. This would cause the device to make two fairly loud, distinctive clicking noises. If the person on the other end was a fellow paratrooper, they were told the appropriate response would be to depress their device twice in quick succession. This would cause four clicking noises. A further use of recognition was to use code words. Within the first 24 hours of the invasion, paratroopers were told to use the word flash with the reply of thunder. This would signal a friendly soldier on the other side. The crickets are said to have been commonly used by paratrooper veterans from D-Day. During a scene in the movie The Longest Day, a US paratrooper is seen to use his clicker as a means of communication. He then hears two clicks in return and comes out only to be shot by a German soldier. The German reloads his K-98 rifle, of which the bolt action is virtually similar to the noise the cricket makes. This, however, is not movie myth, as tested outside Hollywood, there are in fact similar noises. However, it's not believed to be based on any actual events. Following the D-Day invasion, most of the crickets were either lost or discarded by the paratroopers. Finding an original nowadays is extremely difficult and a valued collector's item. They certainly serve their purpose for the paratroopers in the early hours of D-Day and are another great example of ingenuity during World War II. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.